So our aspirants preparing this, they need to know what it is. Uh, they need to know what is it the cause, why is it happening. India has also recognized the challenges of AMR. So we have a national program for AMR containment, which has been around for many years. Uh, globally, there is this uh, world awareness on antimicrobial resistance week, which is observed. Because in this, uh, getting the right information and knowing this could be a problem, that's definitely the first step. Hello aspirants, welcome to the conversational video series brought to you by Vision IS. In one of our previous sessions, we discussed non-communicable diseases. In today's session, we are going to discuss another important global health crisis which is called antimicrobial resistance or AMR. To enlighten us on this particular topic, today we have with us an eminent Vision IS faculty member, Jasmine Ma'am. Welcome Ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am, let's begin this conversation with the most basic question possible related to the topic. That is, what exactly is AMR? So, before we talk about antimicrobial resistance, uh, I want to talk about what is an antimicrobial. So, we talk about microorganisms of different kind like bacteria, virus, fungus. The medicines which we give to kill these uh, different microorganisms when there is an infection because of these, those medicines are called antimicrobial drugs. And when we say antimicrobial resistance, it means that now these medicines are not working. So, any situation where a bacteria or a virus or a fungus or any other microorganism is able to survive or you can say is not responding to the antimicrobial drug, it's resistant to that antimicrobial drug. That situation is antimicrobial resistance. Thank you, ma'am. Now, why this problem exactly has taken the shape of a global crisis? Why is it in the news? Yes, you're very right. This is a global crisis. In fact, WHO goes on to say that uh, this is the world's top 10 uh, global health threats. And the reason for that, uh, we have to think in a way that uh, you know, since the discovery of penicillin, antibiotics and other different kind of antimicrobial agents, uh, they have saved so many lives, right? Because the common infections were killing people before that. Now, if we are in a situation where these medicines are not working, where you're giving medicines to the person, but the person is not getting recovered, uh, the person might have to die irrespective of that medicine. That situation is very scary because that means people will be sick for a longer period of time. That also means diseases will spread more. More people will be getting those diseases for which already we are struggling to provide uh, a treatment. And there can be uh, challenges of uh, infections in major uh, surgeries, like, you know, surgeries like uh, the routine surgeries, like the C-section or bigger surgeries like organ transplants. They will become so much more riskier if we don't have antimicrobial agents. So that's why uh, this globally has been recognized and there is a lot of discussion happening on this. We'll discuss the challenges later. First, we'd like to know what are the underlying causes, the reasons behind the rise in antimicrobial resistance. Chiranjit, if I have to simplify, uh, what happens is you give a medicine to kill a microorganism. Now, when a microorganism comes in contact with that medicine, with that exposure to the medicine, the microorganism has an opportunity to tolerate that medicine and to learn to survive it. If we keep taking these uh, different kinds of antimicrobial medicines regularly, if there are more number of people in the world who are taking uh, or over consuming these medicines, which is now happening very commonly considering there is a lot of self-medication, uh, there is a lot of over prescription of uh, these medicines. In that scenario, the microorganisms can learn to survive. With overexposure, they can change themselves in a way that now they will know how to tolerate the medicine and we call them something like super bugs. So from the normal bugs which are supposed to be killed with, by that medicine, they have now become super bugs because of that overexposure, because of the misuse of different medicines and they have learned to survive. Once they acquire this special property, once they learn how to survive the medicine, 
there is no way that medicine will ever work. We can't change the dose, we can't change frequency, we can't do anything for that medicine to work. Once it has happened, it's a permanent thing. The way you describe the entire thing, it sounds like a very lingering problem. What are the major implications related to the problem? Implications of this like, uh, again, like I've said, you have a disease, but there's no medicine which works against it. So that means there is going, there are going to be longer cases of hospitalizations. That also means that you will have to give new medicines. If one medicine does not work, like I told you, it's a permanent situation. So in this scenario, the only option would be to change the medicine. And the newer medicine might not be similar. It might be more expensive. People might not have easy access to that medicine. And the more advanced the medicine is, the chances are that it might also have more side effects. So that is one major implication of this, right? One is you are sick more, you are less productive and the cost of your treatment is also going to increase. So this cost thing, apart from this cost thing, what are the other major challenges? See, cost is one factor. The other thing which I told you is uh, that uh, there is definitely a problem of increased toxicity also with that advanced drugs. Uh, but what happens is that uh, there is not a lot of research happening. That's one big uh, challenge here, right? Like you might think, like I'll give you the example of tuberculosis. In India, the biggest driver of antimicrobial resistance is tuberculosis. And the reason for that is tuberculosis treatment is long-term treatment. You take treatment for six months, nine months. So for that, longer exposure of uh, the bacteria to the medicine and higher chances of resistance because of that. Now, when somebody has tuberculosis, the first line drug, uh, the most common drug is rifampicin. That's available everywhere, even in our primary healthcare centers. But if that's not working, you move on to the second line drugs. So second line drugs, accessibility will be lesser, not available everywhere. They, the person might have to spend money from his own pocket. So increased expenditure. And sometimes what will happen is the second line drug will also not work. Then you go to the third line. Again, very less availability and more cost. And the challenge here is the biggest of biggest challenge is that there is an end point to it. There is a point where there are no more medicines and we don't have sufficient research happening in this area. In the last many years, we haven't had any new antimicrobial drugs. It's just the existing drugs, their slight formulations are being changed. And the challenge is because the pharmaceuticals companies don't have an incentive to do research in this area. Like a company, if I'm a pharmaceutical company, I would like to make uh, a drug or I will do my research or put my money into a medicine which, uh, for which I'll have a lifelong customer. Like if I make a diabetes medicine, I might have a customer who will take my medicine for 30 years. But if I make an antimicrobial medicine, in that the patient or my customer is going to take my medicine for 5 days, which is not lucrative for me. So the current scenario is that we don't have alternatives. We don't have alternatives beyond a point. So a disease which could have been 100% cu curable, for that now people are going to die because there are no more medicines. Ma'am, among all the challenges that you just mentioned, arbitrary consumption of antibiotics is one of the most important causes behind the rising cases of AMR. Can this condition be acquired naturally? Yes, it can be uh, happening naturally also because all organisms, microorganisms, even larger organisms, over a period of time, they will change. There will be evolution. There will be some modifications. So think of a bacteria or a fungus. Over a period of time, they will change. And when they change, there is a certain possibility that the medicine which you have designed based on their original structure, that might not work. However, we also keep, need to keep this in mind that that change is slow. That change does not happen as rapidly as we are making this by our misuse of different medicines. In fact, you'll be very surprised to know that we might not be knowing that we are having an overconsumption of uh, these antibiotics or other antimicrobial drugs because they can be coming to us through our food. What's happening is, especially in animal-based foods, uh, like we are having milk. Suppose the cow was also given the same antimicrobial drug which you are also taking and this cow is giving you milk. Now, when you are feeding on that milk, you are getting antibiotics or antimicrobial agents, which you might not be aware about also. 
it can also come from other sources uh, like water for example there are untreated waste from from pharmaceutical companies which are being loaded into the river bodies and that is a part of uh, our drinking water cycle so if those waste contains remnants of antimicrobial drugs then without our knowing we have overconsumption we are overexposed to these medicines greatly increasing increasing the incidence of resistance okay with all the information that you have provided it's a very scary picture so is the globe really prepared to tackle the challenge i will not say that we are prepared i would say we are aware and we are working on it uh globally there is this uh world awareness on antimicrobial resistance week which is observed because in this uh getting the right information and knowing this could be a problem that's definitely the first step uh then we have global antibiotic resistance and use surveillance system or what we call glas this is an organization uh which talks about how antibiotics should be prescribed antibiotics is one very big category these are the medicines for uh, killing the bacteria so that's where maximum resistance is happening so this organization is working all over the world to guide people on how this medicine should be used in how much dose to which patients what kind of testing should be done before those medicines are prescribed so all of this uh, can really help in kind of you know warning people against uh, the negative impacts of amr Ma'am, at the national level, how much prepared are we? India has also recognized the challenges of AMR, so we have a national program for AMR containment, which has been around for many years. Along with that, we also have a national action plan for antimicrobial resistance, and in that, we are targeting on the approach of One Health. So, One Health is an approach where we talk about how the environment, people, animals. all of them should be considered as one unit as an integrated format and then we should look for sustainable health options so in this you know like i told you animals then uh, environmental pollution from a uh, water and of course use in people so if all of these things could come together only then we'll be able to contain uh, antimicrobial resistance so these steps uh, it's it's just the beginning we are also trying to control the sale of over the counter medicines like we have red line medicines uh, which will not be sold uh, without prescription to control you know that misuse which we talk about so steps are uh, there but because monitoring is not at that level we are not sure uh, how much result we can we are actually getting on the ground but uh, as a starting point uh, we do recognize the problem i think ma'am we have touched upon each and every aspect we started with the definition then discussed the causes challenges and our preparedness now since most of our viewers are actually preparing for upsc civil services exam could you please tell us the importance of this particular topic Shinji Dal say very important it has been important there have been a number of questions and we can also expect uh, questions further on from this topic uh, because uh, drug resistance that's the overall theme okay and in number of questions even if it is not a direct questions upsc has just mentioned this phrase in one of the statements like connecting it maybe to a vaccine they have asked questions on causes of drug resistance uh, they have even asked a mains question and that mains question was a very applied question which asked that can over overuse through uh, without prescription people are buying medicines can that be a cause of resistance so uh, further also uh, there can be questions especially uh, we can think of questions linked to different diseases like tuberculosis recently we had a tuberculosis report also which specifically talked about different kinds of resistance uh, in tuberculosis uh, you have multiple total extensive there is a lot of variation the basic concept however remains the same so our aspirants preparing this they need to know what it is uh, they need to know what is it the cause why is it happening and from a mains point of view even something like uh, the steps which the government keeps on taking which come in the newspaper from time to time that would be important because that is something which has solutions you can mention in your mains answer thank you so much ma'am for your time and sharing all the pertinent knowledge related to amr now viewers try to make the most of this session we hope you liked and enjoyed the session all the very best